Do you claim that the group of people who come to your seminars are better than others and will have a better life than others? <laughs> um, I, I feel that actually that many people who come to my seminars are sometimes worse than others <laughs> in the sense that they sometimes get a bit self-righteous and judgmental of others and that automatically makes them worse than other people who are not judgmental or self-righteous. So, you know, it depends a bit on the person's attitude. Um, I feel that the people who come to my seminars are, as I, as I have stated many times, the same as the average person on earth with proper, probably one or two exceptions. One exception is that uh, they are willing to come to a seminar where a guy called Jesus is speaking. Which, which indicates a certain degree of emotional openness and, uh, you know, and, a, and also an open mind. Um, more, perhaps more open mind than the majority of people. Second thing that attracts most people to my seminars is a desire for truth. Um, because that's all they get every time they come. They don't get somebody feeding them a heap of addictions. They don't get somebody making them feel better about themselves or making them feel worse about themselves. They just get somebody telling them the truth. And some of those people who come are very attracted to that. And I believe that's a beautiful trait, actually. That's something that I'm attracted to in people. And I believe that, you know, I can understand why that other people are attracted to those seminars for that reason. I do not believe that makes them better than others. In fact, in many cases, some of the people who come to the seminars have lived very bad lives in the sense of immoral and unethical lives. And they will have many things to work their way through if they want to have a relationship with God. In fact, many of them will have many more things to work their way through than the average person on the planet because of the way in which they've treated other people. But, but as was said about me in the first century, the sinners come to share with me. And what, what, why that was, said, that was said was because I don't judge people for what they've done in the past. So many people feel attracted to that. I state truthfully what they've done without judging them. Well, see, earlier <coughs> you said that um, people are worse. Um, I didn't expect you to, uh, to say anyone is better or worse. So perhaps isn't that a judgment? Perhaps no, I mean, I mean if I can clarify what I mean by worse, yeah. I mean that they have been more unloving in their past than the average person. Mm -hmm. So many of the people who come along to seminars have been more unloving in the past than the average person has been. And this is one reason why they come, because they're in so much pain and suffering that they want a relief for it, and they want to find out how to get out of this pain and suffering. That's one of their motivations for coming. So, so this is why many so-called sinners were attracted to me in the first century, for the same reason. They had pain and suffering in their personal lives, which was an indication that their past, they had made choices that were worse, if you like, or more out of harmony with love than the average person's choices. And, uh, but I don't judge that. All I do is help them change mm. by giving them the truths that I've learnt myself. And I suppose the question um, is driving at two important issues. Do you claim that the group of people who come to your seminars are better than others? So now that they've come, even if they've had a, a life that you might regard as sinful, would you call them better people than the average person now? No, I, I feel the mark of where some, whether somebody is becoming better in their life, and I think it's more of a personal comparison than a comparison with another person, is how more humble you're becoming about your life and how more truthful you're becoming about your life. I've seen many people come to my seminars for many years who are not an ounce more truthful or humble than when I first met them. And I feel that's quite sad, but it is a statement of truth. Mm -hmm. I also see some who have come to the seminars who have changed immensely since I've known them. They've become much more humble and much more truthful in their life. So I feel they've definitely changed for the better in their personal comparison with their self. I don't feel a feeling of judgment towards them. I just feel it's a shame that a person would come for three years and listen to 40 or 50 seminars and not change. That's an indication of quite a lot of resistance inside of them and also quite a lot of addiction. 
I also find it immensely beautiful to watch a person change just by coming to one seminar. I think that's amazing. And, I, you know, whenever a person does that, I think it's just wonderful because their life changes before their eyes, you know, almost. It can change so rapidly. So I find either state, like, is an indication of some truth about the individual. Yeah, and I suppose the, the question is asking, do you feel you're creating an elite group of people? Definitely not. If a person followed my teachings, they would never believe themselves to be elite. They will always believe themselves to be a part of humanity and a brother and sister of any other person who's on the earth. They would also have more compassion for other people because they'd realise what they themselves have had to go, go through in order to, be, to become better people. Mm -hmm. So when you've had to personally go through traumatic, painful experiences in order to become a better person, you are usually much more humble about other people and the traumatic experiences they face in order to become a better person. You don't judge them, you judge them far less than you would have before then. So my suggestion is that if anybody who's coming to my teachings are, are judging other people, then they are definitely not in harmony with my teachings. Mm. They're definitely not in harmony with the reception of God's love. They're definitely never going to become at one with God in that state. Mm. Mm. So are you saying that if they believe they are better than other people, who, whether they're coming to the seminars also or people in society, then they're in... They are already more unloving than yes. the average person. Yes. If they believe themselves to be better than the average person and to be more worthy than the average person, then they themselves are already in a worse condition of love than the average person. Mm -hmm. Their judgment is causing them to be in such a condition. Judgment is a huge problem in religion, in, in, in all, sorts of, all sorts of ways of life, but particularly in religious practice on this planet. Because what happens for most people who learn a certain type of religious practice is they start judging all the other people who don't practice it. A person who truly practices the principles of divine truth that I've taught for 2,000 years will never fall into that trap. I've stated over and over, both in the first century and in this life, that anybody who judges another, and remember judgment is an emotion projected towards the other person that they are less than or more unworthy that, oh, than yourself. Anybody who has that particular emotion towards another person is already severely out of harmony with love. Mm -hmm. And as I said in the first century, it would be better if a noose was tied around their neck and they threw themselves into the sea than undertook such a decision to judge another person because that's what's happening to their soul. Their soul is severely degrading in its condition as they judge. A person who's truly practicing the principles that I teach will not judge another. They will support others in their choices and decisions, but they will speak the truth they will be loving under all circumstances. They will often remove themselves from people who are attacking them, and that is fine. That's not a judgment, that's just a feeling of love towards oneself. Mm -hmm. And a true person who is practicing these principles will not feel themselves to be better than any other person on this planet. I don't feel myself to be better than any other person on this planet. One of the main reasons why people get all shocked when they hear me say that I'm Jesus is because they believe I'm saying that I'm better than them. I am not saying that at all. I'm saying I am Jesus, but I am not better than you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, darling. <laughs>